So this stage we covered most of the important claims I want to think about with Chomsky. I do want to spend some time at the end though thinking about a sort of incredible claim that Chomsky makes, which is that he thinks that actually most concepts are not learned, that we come with most of the concepts that we require, at least in our ordinary lives. There's a little bit of caveat here because I think he does think that maybe scientific concepts are learned, but all ordinary concepts we have all along. So this seems really pretty incredible. So one thing it entails is that, for instance, like the concept of a car, that all humans, not, not just now, but all humans ever have had the concept of a car, or the concept of a university, or the concept of, the, of, of an economy. All of these like fairly complicated concepts we've had all along. None of them are learned, all of them are innate. So this is a pretty incredible claim at first sight. We're gonna look at what the argument for that is, I'm going to say some things that maybe might seem it, make it seem like a little bit more plausible, but then I'm going to make some arguments against it at the end. So how could anyone believe such an incredible claim? It really does seem incredible to claim that all humans at any point in history have had the concept of a computer, or a university, or an economy. How could we possibly justify that? Well, the argument works in a few stages, but the first idea that Chomsky has is that if you think about how to define concepts, it seems really, really hard. It's really hard to define pretty much any ordinary concept we might have. So let me just start by thinking about the concept of a car. How might we define what a car is? Now, you might think at first sight it's, it's pretty easy. So you might think, okay, well, let's just start by thinking it like it's like a vehicle with four wheels. But that can't be right because, like, just think about a cart, like a cart dragged that can be dragged by oxen or by cows or something like that, or, or horses. That's a vehicle with four wheels, but presumably it's not a car. So that can't be the right definition of car. The obvious kind of response to that example is like, well, maybe it needs like an engine. Clearly carts don't have engines, but cars do. So maybe that's the salient feature. But that's not going to be quite enough either, because if you think about like a truck is something, or there can, there could, there can, there can be trucks or vans with four wheels. They obviously have engines, but they're not cars either. So you might get more complicated. You might think, okay, well, maybe it's for, it's kind of smaller than a van or a truck. And maybe we'll say it's not for transporting um, not for transporting goods. But even still we haven't really gotten at the right definition because think about like a quad bike. That's something with four wheels with an engine. It's smaller than a van or a truck. It's not for transporting goods, but a quad bike isn't a car either. So then we have to start writing in things like not a quad bike. At this point, maybe we might have might we might have something that's extensionally right and that it ca captures all the right cases. But it's not totally clear it's really a good definition anymore, because it now in, in terms of, it includes this term quad bike. And it seems like we probably really haven't given a full definition of a car until we've also given a full definition of a quad bike. It doesn't really seem quite right to say we can just define what it is to be a car in terms of other things including the notion of a quad bike, but we don't have to give a definition of a quad bike, we just take that for granted. That seems kind of not the right approach. So again, we'd have to go through defining what a quad bike is. Probably we're going to run into just exactly the same kinds of difficulties there. So it turns out it just is very hard to basically give a definition of any kind of ordinary concept. That's just one example. You should think about this for yourselves. Can you give a definition of what it is for something to be an economy, or what it is for something to be a university, or something like that? It seems like it should be easy, but you will find that either basically anything you come up with either has pretty easy counterexamples, or it contains things which themselves really look like they need to be defined. Because remember, to really to give a definition, we have to give it in terms of other things that we fully understand 
to begin with. So that's some, some sort of evidence for Chomsky's first claim, which is that it turns out to be really difficult to give a definition of basically any sort of ordinary concept. But why is that a problem? Why, why should that push us to the conclusion that no concept are learned, that really all our ordinary concepts are innate? Well, the next step of this argument is an observation about children and language learning. We mentioned in previous weeks that children actually seem to pick up language very quickly. We talk mostly about grammar, that they, rule, that they learn the rules of grammar comparatively quickly, and that there are certain mistakes that they never make. But another very impressive thing about children is that they learn words very quickly. They learn, for instance, a number of different words a day, so two or three words a day. Now, if we thought that children had to also learn concepts in addition to learning words, then this would also mean that they were learning several new concepts a day. Because for each of the two or three words, the children would be learning the concept that go, goes along with it. But Chomsky's idea is that, well, given how hard we just saw it is to define a concept, this kind of looks incredible, amazing, impossible to explain. How could children be acquiring two to three concepts a day when we see that, you know, it takes us, it would take us days and days to come up with anything resembling a remote the satisfactory definition of something like a car. How could it be possible to learn concepts like this so quickly, given how hard they are to define? And this, Chomsky thinks, is basically the reason for thinking that concepts are innate and not learned. Because if you think concepts are innate, it's much easier to explain how learning word meaning works. The picture of how word meaning works is that, well, we already sort of have the concept of a car, of a university, of the economy, in our heads. These are already sort of in the brain. And what happens when we get exposed to language is that we just sort of pair them with their labels. We just learn, we don't learn what the concepts are, we just learn what the labels are for them in the language that we grow up to speak. And that does seem like it should be an easier task, or you might think it's an easier task given what we said about definitions. We don't have to learn the concepts, we don't have to go through the process of defining them because we already have all of them, and all we're doing is we're just figuring out basically, in some sense, what the label for each concept is. So that's why Chomsky thinks we should think that all concepts, or, or all ordinary concepts, are innate. Because it's very easy to explain how, how it could be that we learn words so quickly. We learn words so quickly because we already have all the concepts that they express, and all we're doing is we're just pairing the word with the concept it expressed. We're learning a label for a concept that we already have. Okay, so this obviously does seem really quite wild, and it's hard, and, and that is sort of something I think Chomsky should have probably have been a bit more affront about. He's a bit dismissive of the idea that um, this is really quite a strange idea. But I think there's something that could be said on behalf of him. Because let's think about why does this claim seem so wild. I think the claim seems so wild because it seems like it, we don't want to say that like the ancient Greeks, for instance, knew what a car is or knew what a computer is. And that, I think, is part of the reason why the claim seems so wild. But I think the way to make this claim that Chomsky's making seem a bit more sane is basically just to deny the presupposition of that objection. Because that kind of objection is presupposing that having the concept of something is the same thing as knowing what something is. So it's presupposing that having the concept of a car is the same thing as knowing what a car is. And I think probably somebody who has this view of concepts should just deny that. They shouldn't think that having a concept is the same thing as knowing what that thing is. Now that might kind of itself seem pretty strange at this point. You might think, well, what else could a concept be? But a natural answer is just a concept, having a concept is just having a certain kind of ability to think thoughts about that thing. So having the concept of a computer is having the ability to think thoughts about computers. If that's the way you're thinking about concepts, it's not quite as obvious that we're saying something really strange about the ancient Greeks for anymore. We're just saying that they have a certain kind of ability, to, where they have the ability to think thoughts about things like computers. But the thing about an ability is you don't always necessarily know the things that you're able to do. You could discover that you have abilities unexercised abilities that you didn't know you have. And I think that's probably the thing that we should say about the ancient Greeks in this case, if we want to go along with this idea that concepts are innate. What we should say is, 
They do have the ability to think thoughts about computers. They do have the ability to think thoughts about cars. But these are not abilities that the ancient Greeks knew they had. They didn't know they had these abilities. Why didn't they know they had these abilities? Well, precisely because they don't know what cars are and they didn't know what a computer or a laptop is. Because they didn't know what these things were, they didn't know they had this ability to think thoughts about them. And that's the only real difference, you might think, between the ancient Greeks and us. We know what computers are, and that's why we are able to take advantage of the fact that we have the concept. That's why we're able to think, to exercise the ability to think thoughts about computers and cars. But there's no difference in abilities between us, there's just different, a difference in what we know about our own abilities. So I think that that's something that somebody like Chomsky could say to make this thesis seem less incredible than it is. Because one of the main reasons why it does seem incredible is from this identification of having a concept with knowing what something is. And that is maybe something you could just deny. You could say, having a concept is not necessarily the same thing as knowing what something is. Having a concept is just having the ability to think about something. And you might have that ability and not know that you have the ability. So that's something sort of in favour of Chomsky's argument. But I'm also going to say something against Chomsky's argument. Because Chomsky does seem to be making a certain kind of assumption about how concept acquisition would have to happen if it, if it happened at all. Because he starts off with this observation that it's difficult to define concepts. It's difficult to define the concept of a car. So it's difficult to define the concept of a computer. And from that he wants to argue that it must be, it would be too hard to acquire several different word meanings in a particular day because you'd have to acquire all the different concepts, and as we've seen, defining concepts is very difficult. But it's not really clear why that's an argument that acquiring concepts is difficult, unless you think that the way you would have to acquire concepts is by defining them in terms of concepts that you already have. So I, I think what Chomsky seems to be presupposing is that, well, to acquire the concept of a car, you would have to define it. The way that would work is you would acquire it by defining it sort of mentally, in terms of all of these concepts that you already have. And it does seem right is that if that were the way that concept acquisition happened, that it would be very difficult to explain how concept acquisition happened. But it's not really clear why we should think that that's how concept acquisition would happen. Why should we think that in, or in order to acquire a concept, we would have to analyze it or define it in terms of concepts we already have? Why not think we can just get the relevant new concepts by just being exposed to the things in the world? For instance, why not think that you get the concept of, car, of a car not by trying to define it in terms of new concepts, but by just seeing a car, for instance? Why couldn't just seeing a car in the street be enough to give you the concept of a car? So ultimately, I think the person who wants to say that concepts aren't innate has an obvious thing to do in this argument, which is reject the assumption that to acquire a concept you have to define it in terms of new concepts. Now there's still something they have to say. They do have, there has to be a story about how concept learning happens. How is it that we acquire new concepts? But what does seem right is probably what they should say is, well, however it happens, it doesn't happen by defining the new concepts in terms of old ones. It happens some sort of other way, which allows concept acquisition to happen much more easily. Okay, so we did three things in this video. We started off by examining this claim of Chomsky's that most ordinary concepts are innate, that we don't actually learn the concept of a car, we don't learn the concept of a computer, these are things that we had all along. Now that claim was pretty incredible, so the, the first thing I did after that was I tried to make it seem a little, at least a little bit more sane. One way I think to do that is by denying that having a concept of something is the same thing as knowing what that is. Because the reason why it seems so intuitive is because we don't want to say things like the ancient Greeks knew what cars were. But if, if having a concept is not quite the same thing as knowing what something is, then that's not quite as problematic. I'll leave you to decide for yourselves exactly how much that addresses the worry. The final thing we saw was that if you want to deny the concepts are innate, it does seem like there's a pretty obvious target in this argument. Chomsky seems to make a fairly strong assumption about how concept learning would have to happen if it happened at all. He seems to think it, ha it would have to happen by defining the new concept in terms of old ones. But it's just not really obvious why that should be the case, and I'm not really totally sure that the person who wants to say concepts are learned has to subscribe to this. Now, they would have to provide an alternative story for how concept acquisition goes, but Chomsky hasn't really said anything in the article that we read to, to, to motivate the idea that there aren't other possibilities.